Now let's talk about the squeeze term. The main idea behind the squeeze term is that let's say that f of x is greater than or equal to h of x, but less than or equal to g of x. So f is between h and g. Now if the limit as x approaches some number, let's say a, of h of x is the same as the limit as x approaches a of g of x, and let's say that value is L, then the limit as x approaches a of the middle function f of x must also be equal to L. If the small function and the large function have a value of L, then the one in the middle should have the same limit L. And that's the main idea behind the squeeze term. But let's work on some examples to apply it. So for example, let's say that f of x is in between 8 minus x cubed and 8 plus x cubed. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of the function f of x? What's the answer? So how can we figure this out? Well, let's apply the limit to every expression in this inequality. If f of x is greater than 8 minus x cubed, and if it's less than or equal to 8 plus x cubed, then we could say that the limit as x approaches 0 of 8 minus x cubed is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, which is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 8 plus x cubed. Now let's go ahead and use direct substitution on the expression on the left. So as we apply the limit as x approaches 0, this is going to be 8 minus 0 to the third. And the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is greater than that, but is less than or equal to 8 plus 0 to the third. So this is 8, and on the right side, we also have 8. So therefore, If the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is greater than or equal to 8, and at the same time less than or equal to 8, we could say that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is 8. That's the only way where it could be true. It can't be 7, because even though 7 is less than 8, 7 is not greater than 8. And it can't be 9, because even though 9 is greater than 8, 9 is not less than 8. The only way this equation can be true is if we have an 8 in the middle. Then they're all equal to each other. Now let's work on another example. Let's try this one. What is the limit as x approaches 2 of the function f of x? And let's say that f of x is between 5x plus 2 and also is between x squared plus 8. So go ahead and try that problem. So let's find the limit as x approaches 2 of 5x plus 2. And at the same time, let's find the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 8. So let's focus on the left side first. Let's use direct substitution. So this is going to be 5 times 2 plus 2. And on the right side, if we replace x with 2, this is going to be 2 squared plus 8. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 2 that's 12. On the right side, 2 squared, that's 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 plus 8 is 12. So therefore, the only way that this expression can be true is if everything is equal to 12. So we can make the statement that the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x must be equal to 12 according to the squeeze theorem. 
try this one. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of x sine x? What is the answer to that question? Well, let's talk about the graph of sine. This is the graph of sine, at least the right side of the graph. And it has an amplitude of 1. So based on that, sine x is between negative 1 and 1, including those values. Now, if we take that inequality, and if we multiply everything by x, we can then say that x sine x is in between negative x and positive x. So therefore, we need to evaluate the limits at these two points. Let's do it two different ways. The limit as x approaches 0 of negative x, that's the left side, that's equal to 0. The limit as x approaches 0 of positive x, which is the right side, is also equal to 0. So according to the squeeze term, we could say that the limit as x approaches 0 for the middle function, x sine x, must also be equal to 0. So you could do it that way if you want. Or we can just go back to our original way of doing things. So we could take the limit of each portion of this inequality. We could write it simultaneously. If you prefer to do it this way. So on the left, the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x, we know it's 0. And on the right, the limit as x approaches 0 of x is 0. So according to the squeeze term, the only way that these three inequalities can be true, or these three parts of the inequality can be true, is if that they're all equal to 0. So the one in the middle, the limit as x approaches 0 of x sine x has to be equal to 0 to make that inequality true. So that's the answer. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed times cosine 1 divided by x? Go ahead and try this problem. Now, just like sine, cosine will always vary between negative 1 and 1. It really doesn't matter what this function is on the inside. The period could change, but in the end, it's going to oscillate between 1 and negative 1. Now, it may oscillate quicker in the beginning and may spread out towards the end, but in the end, the oscillations will remain between 1 and negative 1. And that's what we want to take from cosine 1 over x. So now what we're going to do is multiply everything by x cubed. So we can make the statement that negative x cubed is less than or equal to x cubed cosine 1 over x, which that itself is less than or equal to positive x cubed. So now that we have this inequality, we can now take the limit of all three portions of this inequality as x approaches 0. So we can say that the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x cubed, that's going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed cosine 1 over x, which is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of positive x cubed. Now let's go ahead and make some space. So now let's substitute x with 0. So we have negative 0 cubed on the left side. The middle part is not going to change, so we could just rewrite it. And on the right side, positive 0 cubed. So negative 0 cubed is simply just 0. So we could see what the answer is going to be. Now, if the limit as x approaches 0, if it's greater than or equal to 0, 
and at the same time less than or equal to zero? There's only one possible answer for it. It's equal to zero. And so that's the answer for uh, this problem. And now you know how to apply the squeeze theorem. So hopefully these were enough examples to help you uh, understand this material.